Hello everybody! Welcome back to Simple Art for Adults. I am Erin and I am swatching these Castle Arts 120 Premium Soft Touch Colored Pencils. This is take two for this video because unfortunately the first take didn't make it. I don't know what's happening with my software today, but things are being really really janky for lack of a better word. So I am swatching pencils. I am drinking my coffee in my Mana stainless steel uh, mug that I picked up from Ollie's. If you guys have an Ollie's nearby, you really should go check them out. I find good stuff there. Anyway, so I got the 120 set of colored pencils and they came in a handy dandy little case here. Let me zoom you out just a bit so that you can see. Ignore my mess on my candle lighter over here. So they came in this little case. And it's not the sturdiest case, unfortunately, but it's a free case that came with the pencils. And this set was $10 cheaper than the ones that came in the tin, so this was definitely the better deal for me. So I started swatching them already. I've got some really pretty oranges and yellows and reds going here. So I've gotten up to the Venetian red so far. And for those of you who are curious... This swatch chart came from Sparkle Wings. If you Google it, you can find it. It's a free downloadable chart. I happen to like it better than some of the other ones that I have because I can see up to 150 colors all on one sheet. And for colored pencils, this is plenty of room for me to be able to see. So I'm on Scarlet Red here. This number 22. I love, love, love that they have named these pencils. Finally, it makes me so happy. When I swatch, I generally go from hard pressure and then I graduate to a softer pressure. So I get the full color range. These pencils, when compared to something like a Polychromos, they feel light. Uh, the core, I believe, is the same size. It's either 3.8 or 4 millimeters. I have the name of the company with its little castle logo here. The soft touch and the vermilion color name and the color number. I have found that the color that comes out of the pencil lead is not uh, usually matching this too terribly well. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is significantly darker than the swatch. So that is kind of an issue that, and that's also why I always swatch. I'm sorry, I have a mint. Um, when they sent me the case that comes with this upside down, it's an upside down chart, their universal color system, and it has all of the colors, all of them in their whole range of products. And it has this key down here, I'm trying to get the glare off of it. And then the little symbols tell you, you know, what, what media that color comes in. Now, the color pencils aren't available in all of these colors, but they are available in most. And the swatches absolutely do not match what is on this sheet. It's nice for reference, um, if you, you know, if they ever decide to do open stock or what have you, this little sheet can be pretty handy, but for the most part, it's not going to help you out much when you're actually coloring something, because the colors just don't match. So, I would recommend not relying on that sheet for the actual color, um, instead swatch out the colors on your own. That cadmium red is really nice, it's like a carmine, it's really pretty. So how has everyone been? What is everyone doing? What is everyone coloring? I'm working on several things right now. So maybe I'll get one out here at the end of the video and show you. All right, so now I'm looking for Alizarin Crimson, which is the trouble with this because these don't come in the order that they are in the on the swatch chart. Where is Alizarin Crimson? Maybe it's toward the back. You guys are going to get to look at my forearm here for a bit. There it is. Alizarin Crimson. And that's pretty... It's pretty uh, pink compared to the Alizarin Crimson that I'm used to, like in the Polychromos set. So, even though they did give these pencils... The actual pigment names, they don't always match. So, 
what you expect is going to be an alizarin crimson may not actually be an alizarin crimson as we just discovered all right now i'm looking for magenta here it is yeah they're all over the place in this case so as i'm doing this i'm also straightening them out and putting them in the right order in the case I'm not trying to be fancy about this. I'm not trying to make them neat. I just want the colors down so I can see them. All right, Indian Red Light. Mm -mm. I'm trying to turn all the colors here so I can see what they are. What's this? Azalea Pink. There's all the browns. Why is there a green there? Doesn't make any sense. Indian Red Light. Well, if that's the light version, I'm kind of interested in seeing the not light version. You know what I mean? That's pretty pigmented right there. And that's a beautiful color. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, I've got to pull some of these pencils out so I have room to put the next ones. Purple Deep. Oh, Jean, purple. Purple light. Well, where is Purple Deep? Purple Lake Deep, Ultramarine Violet, Purple Deep. I found it. It's like they just suck these in here all willy-nilly. <laughs> so I hope you guys don't mind that I'm fishing around through my case while I swatch these out. But I thought it would be a, uh, since I'm going to be sitting here at my desk for a little bit anyway, I thought it would be a good time to come on and talk to you guys and make a quick little video. How are you guys liking the um, the silent color along that I'm doing with the Prismacolors in the A Million Sloths book. Are you guys enjoying that? It's easier for me to make videos like that because even if people are being loud, all I have to do is just get rid of the sound, which I forgot to do in that particular video, but I learned how now. <laughs> I just have to get rid of the sound and then uh, put music over it. So even if everybody in here is being really, really loud, I can still make videos that way. And basically, it was really easy for me, too. Every time I color that picture, all I have to do is turn my camera on and record it. it but remember to use the little, um, the little tags, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Purple. Making sure you guys can still see. Here we are. I don't have very much space at this desk, so it gets a little, it's a little difficult. So this reminds me of the purple in the Spear of Farben set, too, that isn't exactly the purple that we're used to, if that makes any sense. You know, we're kind of used to purples that are more violet, and purple, I assume actual purple pigment, is a pinkier color, which is interesting. Now I'm looking for purple light right here. Not a whole lot of difference between those two colors. They almost look like the same, the same pigment to me. Or the exact same color. This one, and I guess that one's a little bit brighter. So, yeah. Pull some more pencils out. Bengal Rose Deep, which is right here. So yeah, I'm currently working on the page in A Million Sloths, which I'm absolutely loving, and I'm going to be recording more of that here um, this evening sometime after I finish making my family some dinner. Um, and I'm also doing a page in Worlds Within Worlds, which is probably one of my most favorite coloring books of all time. I absolutely love it. So now we're at Bengal Rose. I'm doing the um, picture in the library with the water coming out of the bookshelves. And I've started coloring some books. And I'm really liking it because I can just, you know, pick a color combination and color uh, some of the books. And it's easy to pick up and put down and pick up and put down. So that's why I chose that page. Cherry pink. I like this a lot too. Pull some more out. I don't know how to say this word. Jaipur pink. Looks um, kind of like a hot pink on the barrel. 
It looks kind of like a Crayola carnation pink on the page, though. I do like that one a lot, too. Grenadine. Um, let's see, where is Grenadine? Right here. This looks very similar to that Diaper Pink, although maybe a little less bright. Maybe has a little more white added to it. All right, Grenadine Light, which I believe is right here. Much just slightly lighter than the regular Grenadine. Just slightly. It's so... It's not a big difference, and you guys may not even be able to see that difference on the camera. It's very possible. All right, now we are at rose pink, which is right here. Let me move the sheet. So, yeah, I don't have a whole lot planned for today. Um, I'm going to make dinner, take a shower, take a drink of my coffee. That's pretty much all I've got going today. And color. Of course, I'm going to color. I felt a little bit under the weather for the last, um, I don't know, the last three or four days. But no fever right now, so I'm not, I'm not stressing out about it too much. It might just be, a it might just be allergies, honestly. Azalea pink, which is lighter still. And again, guys, this is just printer paper. So some of the colors are going to look better and different when they're actually down on a coloring page. All right, Bengal Rose Light. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Really, really pretty. I can see a blend with this and the Purple Deep. I can already see it. It's going to be one of my favorite combos. Lavender Light. Let me pull the mob out of there. Lavender Light. Really pretty lavender, too. Guys, I'm in love with these pencils. Mauve. Where'd it go? I just pulled it out of there. Wait, no, that's Mauve Deep. And that goes here, so I'll go ahead. No, I don't want to do that yet because I'll end up losing it. Where is the mall? Is it in my hand? Mulberry, lavender, purple lake deep, heather purple. I can swear I just pulled it out of this case. Get a roll under. What have I done? Okay, well, I guess we're just going to skip moth for now because I don't see it anywhere right now. Let's pull those greens out of there. Purple lake deep, which is right here. Oh, so pretty. Purples are my favorite. And they are not stingy with the pinks and purples in this set. They have some lovely, lovely colors. All right, regular purple lake, which is going to be over here somewhere. Chrome green, us greens, we don't want any of that. Ultramarine, indigo. Where are all the purples? Am I missing some pencils somewhere? Oh, they're over here. Doop. Hey, and I found them all. That is an interesting mauve, but that's what it says on the pencil. I'm not used to mauve being that color. So if this is new to you all, you're not alone. <laughs> all right, so... Lavender Light, and then Mauve, and then Purple Lake Deep, and now we're on to Purple Lake. I was not prepared. But if you guys have done this, then you understand what it's like to try to order and swatch a million pencils. Lavender. So I ordered the set of 100 Super Tips, the Crayola Super Tips markers, and those are going to be here sometime before Sunday, it says. And I also ordered the set of 120 Crayola Color Pencils, 
and I figure after I finish the picture that I'm doing in um, Among the Sloths, I'll pick another one and do it entirely in Crayola. And I may use super tips on it, uh, but if I do and you don't have super tips and you just have the pencils, I'm going to give, I'll give you like a pencil, um, pencil alternative to the marker that I use. I figure I could probably make it work that way, but I'm pretty excited about it. A lot of my Crayola pencils have either gone missing or I've given them to uh, my friend's kids or, you know, what have you. I gave one set of them to a friend who wanted to get into coloring, but what didn't have the budget to buy anything. So I gave her um, one set of my Crayolas. The other one, I don't know. I don't know what's happened to all of them. I have a 24 set that I pulled out the other day. Ultramarine Violet. Ooh wee. That's one heck of a color. That's some serious pigment. I love it. All right. Prussian blue. That's nice. These blues, you guys, they feel a little drier than the reds and the yellows, for example. But they are absolutely soft and pigmented like crazy you know normally in in budget pencil sets the blues are the ones that give you the most trouble they are the least pigmented these that's not the case with these ultramarine okay so now we're over here to cornflower blue which is the one i'm holding in my hand Let's straighten this up i'm doing this over a sheet of watercolor paper to try and add a little texture so that I get more pigment out of the pencil. And it's working fairly well, I think. All right, so cornflower blue. Let me pull some of these greens out. I've got pencils everywhere, you guys. Okay. Cobalt blue deep. I don't know if I had that one over here. Doesn't look like it. So it's got to be over here. <laughs> this may take me a little bit, which is, again, kind of why why I figured I'd go ahead and get on camera and do it. I'm going to be sitting here anyway, right? If you guys have any swatching to do that you've been putting off because you just don't want to, hey, now is the time. Get out and do your swatches with me. Cobalt blue deep. I'm going to go here. Indigo white, and that one's right here. I don't think I've seen an indigo light in any other set of pencils, but it's a it's a nice, interesting color. It's like a like a desaturated navy almost. I like it. Delft blue, which is right here. It's another nice and vibrant blue. I haven't even sharpened these. I'm just using them the way they came out of the package. All right, now we've got grays and browns and stuff over here. I've got to pull out Get rid of those. Cobalt blue. Cobalt turquoise. Those are all greens. Cobalt blue is right here. It looks like a denim color to me. I don't know about you guys, but swatching is always fun for me. I like to get to know my new pencils, my new media. And I think swatching is the best way to do it. And you get to learn what colors in the set you like the best and which ones that you're most likely to use. Um, Ultramarine light. Oh my goodness gracious, you all. This color is so pigmented and so creamy. Holy shamoly. Cobalt blue light, and I think that was still in here. Primary blue. Cobalt blue light, there it is. And yes, I realize that my swatches are a little messy. I don't really care. 
It's from my reference. It's not going to the museum. I don't want to take my time. I mean, I could take my time and make it perfect, but nah. Sky blue. That's a very pretty sky blue. I like that. Intense blue. Ooh. Oh, wow. They weren't kidding. It's like an electric blue almost. But unlike the electric blue in the Prismacolors, this one's nice and soft and creamy and pigmented. Cypress green, which is right here. That's like a peacock green. Primary blue, which is this one. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. There we go. This is the primary blue here. Cerulean blue. It's one of my favorite colors in the Crayola line, but the cerulean isn't isn't anything like the Crayola one. Cerulean blue middle. Actually looks a little brighter than that one. And then cerulean blue light, which I do believe is over here. Right here. Yep, right here. So much pigment. These all look, this one looks like the darker one. And this one looks like the lightest one. That's kind of weird. I've not seen that happen, but, oh well, yeah, this looks like light. The middle makes sense, but I think that the light and the regular are switched. I don't know, can you guys see that? See how this one is darker than this one? Weird. Cobalt turquoise. Nice, pretty blue. I'm going to go ahead and pull these blues out because I'm almost there. Green gold. All right. Cobalt turquoise green. This is where things are going to start getting hairy because I've pulled, I've pulled everything out of the case. That's teal. That's phthalo turquoise. That should be over here. Jade. Permanent. Cadmium. What's this? Mint. Mint green light, emerald permanent, leaf, cadmium, sap. All right, I'm going to do some digging. Turquoise, turquoise, or cobalt turquoise green. And I've got one stuck underneath my drawer over here. Uh, Prussian green. Nope, it's not one of those. Thalo hookers. Thalo, cadmium, teal green light, terra verde, chrome green, viridian, leaf, teal, thalo turquoise. Well, oh, but <laughs> cobalt turquoise green, it was laying right here, right beside me. Go figure, right? Next time I do this, I'm going to need to be a little more organized. <laughs> I just wanted to take advantage of the relative quiet that's in my house right now, so that's what we're doing. Teal green light. It's right here. Another one of my absolute favorite colors. I like this with purple. Teal and purple and silver. Ugh. I know it seems like a 1990s wedding, <laughs> but either way, that's the way I like it. All right, teal green was right over here just a second ago, unless I moved it. Terra Verde, teal green right here. Oh, that was much softer and smoother than I expected. And these two look 
And this one's a slight bit darker. The yellow turquoise, which is right here. Oh, that's pretty too. I use greens, I think, more than just about any other color pencil, so I'm always excited. All right, so now we need jade green, which I believe was over here somewhere. Oh, la, 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 la. Let's see. Yep, right here. Jade green. It's like a true green in the Prismacolor set. Okay. Mint green, which is this one. That's even brighter. That might look more like the true green now that I see this. Mint green light. Once again, this one looks darker than this one. The light looks like the darker one. I wonder... I wonder if they're mislabeled, or I wonder if maybe I'm just crazy, because honestly, it keeps happening, and I don't know why. Castle Green, which is like a really, really pretty, oh wow, I really like that color. I can already tell that's going to be one of my go-tos. Juniper Green, Leaf Metal Juniper right here. Alright. Phthalo green light. And I think it's Terra Verde. We don't want that. Oh, oxide of chrome green gold. It's gonna be here. Phthalo green light. There we go. Love that. A nice cool green. And then regular phthalo green, which should be, well, tell me I lost that one too. Emerald, cadmium, chrome, meridian, leaf green light, castle green, leaf green, cadmium green, phthalo green. There we go. Found it. Now this one appears to be in the right order. The phthalo green is much darker than the phthalo green light. Castle green deep. Right here. Pretty. The range of greens in this set is amazing. Leaf green light, which was over here. Green gold, which is right here. It's one of my favorite colors in the in the polychromos. I use it a lot for coloring um, trees, and leaves, sometimes even wood. Castle green light, which I believe is here in my hand somewhere, right here. There's a piece of another pigment stuck in that pencil. Interesting. Or the pigments didn't get mixed completely. Alright. Now we're on the last slot over here. So, two more rows to do. Leaf green. Right here. I hope that you guys, at least some of you guys, are enjoying this. I know some people don't really like to watch people swatch because they think it's boring. And I know other people like to listen to it uh, while they are coloring or doing their own their own swatches. Leaf green middle. Now I like how this looks. The leaf green is here and the leaf green middle is here. So that's you know a definite noticeable difference. 
cadmium green pale. Okay, so that's like an olivey color, like an army green. I'm so stuffy. Permanent green, which is here. Very similar to permanent green in the polychromos. Maybe not, it's not as pigmented as that one, but it's all, the color is similar. Emerald green. Love that color too. Cadmium green. It's like a darker olivey green. Sap green, which is one of my favorite colors. And the Prismacolor, the sap green light. I go through that pencil faster than just about any other. These two look very, very similar. I wonder if they'll look different when I get them on a toothier paper. Prussian green. That's close to the juniper up here. Pickers green. Ooh wee, that's beautiful. All right, and now another one of my absolute favorite colors of all time, especially in the Lyra uh, Rembrandt Polycolor set, which is Viridian. I absolutely love the color Viridian, and I like it in this set too. They've done a great job with it. Love it, love it, love it. It's like peacock green, but really dark. Now, the one in the, in the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor set is brighter than this. But it, it does look a lot like it. Oxide of Chrome. This is a super duper pigmented pencil as well. I really like that. That's going to come in handy for earthy things. Chrome green. that a lot too. These dark, dark green colors um, are hard to come by in a lot of sets and I'm really, really pleased to see them all in here. Terra Verde Deep. This is a color I've never even heard of before. That's like a smoky, like a blue gray. I do like that. And then regular Terra Verde, which is more gray for sure. I'm probably not saying that right. Terra Verde. And then what do we have now? Make sure I haven't missed any spaces in here. This case is a little strange. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. Uh, burnt Sienna. These are all going to be over here in the browns. Oh, right here. Burnt Sienna. One more row after this and we're almost done. Okay. I think I might have missed a... No, I didn't. Okay. Indian Red, which I just saw somewhere. There it is. Alright, we're on the last row here. Right now, compared to Indian Red Light, Indian Red Light is significantly pinker. It's got more of a purple plum, I guess I should say, than the Indian Red. This is a beautiful color as well, though. I really like it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so there, that goes there. And this one, is, let's see what's next. Sorry, I'm organizing while I go here. Uh, brown ochre. Where's that? Where's the brown ochre? Right here. Uh, 
It's a nice, just normal brown color, it looks like. Raw Umber. Just your traditional browns. Sepia, sepia, however you say that word. Pretty sure it's sepia. But I've pronounced it both ways, and either anytime I pronounce it, somebody tells me I'm doing it wrong. So <laughs> if I say sepia, they tell me it's sepia, and if I say sepia, they tell me it's sepia. So who knows? <laughs> Walnut brown. It's a nice, deep, rich brown. Van Dyke brown. Just the classic browns that you would find in most of your pencil sets. That's nice and deep, too. Okay. I'm kind of bummed that the sepia wasn't darker than that, though. Burnt umber. Okay. Warm gray light. What's still in the case? Let me go ahead and pull these last few out. All right. Warm gray light is, is it here. The selection of uh, browns and grays is not not as extensive as it is in other sets. And I can tell you right off the bat that I'm kind of bummed out that there isn't a darker gray than what we have here. It looks like the burnt umber is as dark as it gets, and honestly, it's not that dark. I like a nice dark, dark, dark brown, like an espresso or a, or a sepia for the most sepia. Um, and it doesn't look like any of these are quite as dark as I would like to see them. But I can supplement with other pencils. The Black Widows would probably play very, very nicely with these, the way they feel. Warm gray light, and then that was Davy's gray, which is a nice gray color. I like that. Then we're on to charcoal gray. I'm trying to keep this where you guys can see it. Which is not as dark as I would have expected a charcoal gray to be either. It's just not very pigmented. All right, cool gray. That's nice and dark. Cool gray deep. It's just slightly darker. Payne's Gray, which is another one of my all-time favorite pencils, especially in the Polychromos set. This one, again, it's just, it bums me out because I'm used to a nice, deep, dark Payne's Gray, and this one is just not, it's just not that dark. Ivory Black. Not incredibly black, but that's okay. I prefer to have some of the color shine through the black when I do use it. Now, if I keep going over it, it gets nice and dark. And then titanium white. And I know you guys can't see that, but I can. All right, and there we have it, guys. There's the whole 120 Castle Art pencils all swatched out. It's a nice color range. Um, I am in love with the greens and the purples. I'm so happy with both of those uh, selections of colors that they've given. I am not so happy with the browns and the grays, mostly because I feel like we, we need darker ones. Um, it's going to be really hard to get contrast in pictures without something darker than this. You can always go in with an ivory black, um, you know, if you use it lightly, or you can use the complementary color to create a nice deep brown shadow if you choose to layer that way. Uh, but I won't know how these pencils layer until I've had a chance to use them in a coloring picture and I'm not going to have a chance to use them in a coloring picture for a little bit because I have so many other things that are going on and pictures that I want to finish. But 
it is in the it is on the agenda I am going to be doing one and if anybody has these pencils and would like for me to add a, a picture with castle arts to the list of things that I'm going to do on camera just make sure you leave me a comment down there and let me know I also have the older 72 set um, so I can replace some of these with that as they run out but I think for what they are for the money um, I think I paid forty dollars for this. It came packed inside the case. There are no open stock pencils, so that's kind of a bummer. When you're out, you're out. And I think that whichever of these companies decides to start opening, um, decides to start selling open stock pencils first, is going to be the one that takes over the market. There are so many moderately priced colored pencils on the market, and I wouldn't consider like Castle Arts or Arteza or Spear Farben. I wouldn't call those cheap because they're not cheap. They're they're moderately priced. Crayolas are cheap. Crayolas are $15 for 120 pencils. That's cheap. These are just moderately priced. And these companies, some of them, Castle Arts, Spear Farben, Black Widow, they make some some of the products they make are absolutely wonderful. But what holds me back from saying that you should run right out and buy these right now is the fact that you cannot buy individual pencils when you run out. So when you spend $40 on a set like this, or with the Arteza set, for example, the Arteza set's like $70 or $80 for the set of $120. So if you buy that, that's $70 to $80 you've just spent on a set of pencils, and what happens when you run out of the color? Your only option then at that point is to turn around and buy at least a $48, $72, whatever their smallest set is, or the smallest set that contains that color. So in the long run, the pencils that are cheaper, they're moderately priced, they don't end up being cheaper in the long run because you can't buy the pencils individually. And that's, you know, one of those things that really I wish they would do. And I think whichever one of these companies is the first to come out with some sort of open stock purchasing system is going to take over the whole entire market for colorists. Everybody's going to be all over it. And I would even recommend or even suggest that they sell, if if selling pencils open stock one at a time is too difficult for them, to sell them in batches of four, like a package of four of the same color pencil, I would buy them that way. I would be more than happy to, to spend 10 bucks and buy four or five of the same pencil if it means I don't have to turn around and buy the whole set all over again. And I'm sure that a lot of people definitely will agree with me on that. Well, anyway, guys, it's been really fun swatching out my Castle Art pencils here for you today. Sorry the video quality couldn't have been a little bit better. Um, I, like I said, I'm just so disorganized today. Everything's such a mess. But I'm glad I got to spend some time hanging out with you. I'm really, really excited to color a picture with them. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'll think of one when I get uh, one of my other whips done. This is your first time here. Make sure that you subscribe. Um, I don't know yet what my upload schedule is going to be, but I hope it'll be at least once a week. Um, I do all kinds of fun stuff. I do product reviews, uh, you know, just whatever. Whatever happens to float my boat that day, that's the kind of video that I'm going to make. Um, make sure that you ring the notification bell too, because if you don't, YouTube may not even show you my new videos. It's been happening to me with my favorite YouTubers, and I'm telling you I'm irritated about it. So make sure to hit that notification bell and select all if you want to know every single time I upload a video. Until next time, guys, it's been fun and happy couple.